Critical race theory has become foundational to the left's worldview. And um, it is a term surrounded by a lot of buzzwords, buzzwords like systemic uh, racism, uh, buzzwords like white privilege, white fragility. And so you have here a, uh, a kind of vocabulary of its own that requires a little bit of probing and a little bit of close examination because we should ask, what is critical race theory? What at the core does it mean? Not what is it like, but what is it? We also hear from the left, uh, and this has come in response to parents uh, shrieking about critical race theory. What? Why are you subjecting my seven-year-old to this kind of indoctrination? Uh, that, oh no, critical race theory, it's a very obscure uh, legal argument. It's only taught in some law schools. It's kind of a subject of arcane, abstruse debate. Uh, no, no, this is not something that we're teaching in schools. So question number two is, is critical race theory a legal theory that is uh, arcane, or is it actually being taught? And finally, um, what is really wrong with the approach? Because sometimes when you're confronted, the, in fact, the people who initially deny that critical race theory is being taught, sometimes break down and go, well, it is being taught, but hey, what's wrong with teaching about slavery? What's wrong with teaching about the Civil War? What's wrong about teaching about uh, Rosa Parks and anti-discrimination? You got a problem with that? So the fallback is, yes, we're teaching it, and it's a good thing. So it's worth asking, what is wrong? Why is it indoctrination to be teaching critical race theory? So I want to briefly um, stab, take a stab at answering these questions. Now, first of all, critical race theory is the simple notion that uh, all groups, uh, and we're talking here about racial groups, uh, ethnic groups, are expected on all measures of academic achievement and economic performance to fare equally. That is the underlying you could call it presumption. I say presumption because it is kind of assumed that in a non-discriminatory world, this would in fact be the result. And um, obviously groups don't differ in natural or genetic uh, capacity. Um, it would be racist to assume that some groups are superior to others or inferior to others. And therefore, since groups are equal, one would anticipate that under fair rules, under neutral principles, they would uh, succeed equally. But when you look at the finish line, both in the uh, measures of academic achievement, standardized tests are a perfect example of this, or any measure of economic performance, you notice that groups don't in fact hit the finishing tape at the same time, and therefore reasoning backward, critical race theory holds, that these groups don't have, well, they don't like to use the term equality anymore because equality could mean either equality of opportunity or rights, or it could mean equality of results. And the left is always inclined toward equality of results. And so in order to sort of bake that term into their ideology, they now use the term equity. Equity means equality of result. And so the left is basically saying that if groups don't succeed equally, it must be because there is baked in racism. Racism that is somehow, if not visible and apparent, it's in the system. That's where we get the idea of systemic racism. And since racism is now somehow institutionalized, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, part of the rules, it's part of the culture, uh, then, then it follows that whites benefit from it even without being consciously aware of it. This is where white privilege comes from. You're privileged because you're part of a privileged system. It's kind of like your canoe is on a river that's going in this direction, and the other guy happens to be on a canoe in which he's going in the opposite direction. Well, the current is pulling you and, and moving your canoe faster than his canoe because that's the culture that's been created over many centuries. That's the river, if you will. And so this is what critical race theory means. Now, uh, is it being taught? Is it a legal theory? Uh, or is it in fact being taught in schools? And the simple answer to that, and it's kind of silly that this is even being debated, is it's obviously both. Um, something can be a legal theory and taught in a sophisticated 
way in a, in a law school or uh, let's just say in a senior seminar in college. And the same theory can be th taught in a more elementary way in high school and then in, in the most elementary way of all in middle schools and elementary schools. Uh, I mean, if you take the stories of Shakespeare, let's take, for example, Romeo and Juliet, you could have a graduate level seminar on Romeo and Juliet. You could also discuss the play uh, as, an, uh, as a freshman in college. Uh, it's often assigned in high school. And, and if you take the story at its bare bones, you could tell a 10 year old about Romeo and Juliet. You can tell the story in a sort of Disney-ish way uh, and you would pretty much be able to find an audience at whatever level you do it. And the same is true with critical race theory. No one is claiming that Kimberly Crenshaw's legal law review article that first talked about intersectionality and had this kind of arsenal of terms is assigned to 12 year olds in school. No one's saying that. But what we are saying is that, you, that those doctrines are then, you could almost call it crayonized so that they can be taught really even to seven-year-olds or six-year-olds uh, in a kind of diluted but no less um, doctrinaire way. Now, I think what's wrong with this whole approach is this. It's kind of like um, blaming the thermometer for the fact that the patient has a fever. Imagine you take a thermometer and you have groups, let's just say group A, group B, group C, and you have them all kind of use the thermometer and then you take their temperature. You realize that by and large, there are some guys in group A who have a fever. Now they can say, wait a minute, we expected the thermometer would produce equal results among all the groups and therefore the thermometer is biased. Let's throw the thermometer down. Let's stomp on it. This is critical race theory. You're blaming, if you will, the mechanism, the mechanism often of measuring achievement. And it's a false diagnosis because it's turning you away from the real problem. Now, when I, when I pointed this out on social media, someone goes, what's the real problem, Dinesh? Uh, almost implying like I was, I was um, concealing a racist presupposition. That are, you, are you really saying that groups differ in inherent ability? And look, I mean, I've written a 600 page book on this. It's called The End of Racism. It's my most scholarly work. 2000 footnotes. So it's not like I'm trying to hide from this subject. I offer a detailed explanation of why groups differ. And it's not because of inherent differences or biological differences. No, uh, it's ultimately because of a whole set of factors uh, which go back to terrible schools, dangerous neighborhoods, gangs, uh, and a kind of dysfunctional culture that sometimes develops not in the black community, but it does develop in the inner city city where you have terrible homework habits, poor study habits. People have aspirations. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor, but no idea of what it takes to become an astronaut or become a doctor. And so what you have is you find that poor Asian Americans are often more successful even than middle class whites. Why? It's because middle class whites or blacks. Uh, and part of the reason for that is because they have intact families, they have homework habits. And so it is these cultural attributes of success that are the reason why some groups are doing better, even when you correct for socioeconomic differences. Some people think that this is all a matter of, of rich and poor, and that if you somehow uh, level for socioeconomic differences, all these racial differences will go away. No, they don't. They, they don't because you have socioeconomic factors, but you also have cultural factors. And I think if we pay attention to this, we can get to the bottom of these problems and we can solve them. Now, the Democrats and the left don't want to solve them. They like the fact that there are terrible schools. They like the fact that you have dependency. They like the fact that you have broken families and terrible neighborhoods because that is a political harvest for them. So critical race theory is something that the Democrats have latched onto, uh, not because it's a way of helping blacks, but because it's a way of keeping blacks wedded desperately to the Democratic Party.